The final component of topic 5, bottom-up parsing, is Sable CC. Sable CC is a compiler-compiler that we can use to automatically generate parser. It is a tool that implements bottom-up parsing. Previously, we have used Sable CC to generate a scanner that can correctly categorize our tokens. A parser, on the other hand, is able to produce output and parser produced by Sable CC specifically will produce the output in the form of syntax tree. To use Sable CC, we provide a grammar file. The file will be named as something.grammar. We also prepare two Java classes. The first one is a translation Java, translation.java. The second one is compiler.java. By using our grammar file as input, Sable CC will generate the Java codes. So there are Java codes that will be automatically generated by the Sable CC. And then together with the translation file and compiler file and all the Java codes generated here, we compile them using Java and this will become our new compiler. For this new compiler, we can insert our source code and as the output, it will be in the form of an abstract syntax tree. This is an illustration of how the generation and compilation of a compiler using Sable CC is done. So, for example, this is the grammar file that we must provide, language.grammar. Once we insert it into Sable CC, Sable CC will automatically produce a parser, a lexer, a node, and analysis. So, these are all in the form of dot java files and then we as user must also write a translation.java file a com and also a compiler.java file finally we compile all the dot java files using the java command and we will get all the files as dot class we will not go into detail on how Sable CC works. The scope of our discussion is how bottom-up parser grammar, as we have seen in this topic, can be included into Sable CC dot grammar file. So there are six sections in a grammar file. We have package, helpers, states, tokens, ignored tokens, and productions. The first four. We have discussed this when we did lexing.grammar, when we were building our scanner. We will discuss the last two, ignore tokens and production. Ignore tokens, just like its name imply, is simply tokens that we want the parser to ignore. Production is the most important part of the grammar file. It contains the grammar rules for the language being defined. Each definition consists of the name of the non-terminal being defined, an equal sign, an extended BNF definition, and a semicolon to terminate the production. Example of a production, defining a while statement is this. So we have statement can be derived to while, left parenthesis, boolean expression, right parenthesis, statement, and semicolon. Just like we have previously discussed when we were doing lexing.grammar, production can include extended Bacchus neural form construct. For example, if X is any grammar symbol, 
x equals sine is an optional x, whether it doesn't appear at all or it appear once. x star means it can not appear at all or it can appear multiple times. Meanwhile, x plus means it must appear at least one and it can appear multiple times. Alternative definitions under productions are permitted. They must be labeled and this vertical bar symbol must be used to differentiate them. An alternative name or the label are enclosed in braces. So for example, in the box here, argument list is identifier with the name single. So the name must be enclosed in curly braces. Or identifier left parenthesis, comma, identifier right parenthesis plus and for this particular definition or this particular rule the name is multiple previously we were discussing alternative definition where the alternative definition must have names that is included in curly braces so alternative definition is something that happens when you have more than one rules derived from the same noun terminal. So for example, if you have S can be derived to A and S can be derived to B. So this would be S can be derived to A or B. And each of these must be given name. Now we are talking about labels. Labels, they must be used when you have two identical names appear in the same grammar rule. Each item label must be enclosed in brackets and they are followed by a colon. So if you look at the example in the box here, this is for for statement. So a for statement can be something like this. For i equals to 0, i is less than 7, and i equals to i plus 1. And the way that this is defined in production, uh, you will notice that there are several symbols that appear more than once. First of all is semicolon semicolon appears twice we also have assignment operator assignment operator also appears twice so if you have symbols that appear twice in the same rule you need to label them therefore here um, the production part for this for statement, for statement equals to for left parenthesis and then we need to have an assignment expression, this whole thing. So for this whole thing, it is labeled as init or initialized. assign expression for this one and then we have the first semicolon so the first semicolon is labeled as s1 which is referring to this and then we have a boolean expression which is this whole thing Next, we have the second semicolon, which is labeled as S2. 
And then we have another assign expression. So this assign expression is labeled as increase, I-N-C-R. So this is how labels work. Let's look at this grammar and how we can put it into the production section of Sable CC. This grammar, just like other grammars, are made up of non-terminals, terminals and derivation arrows. Most importantly, we need to be able to identify the terminals. So terminals are numbers, lowercase letters, and symbols. So in this particular grammar, our terminals are plus, minus, multiplication, division, left parenthesis, right parenthesis, and number. On the right side here is the tokens and ignored tokens part of Sable CC grammar file. We start by defining tokens and all terminals must be defined under tokens. So we have identified that number is a terminal, plus is a terminal, minus is a terminal, multiplication, terminal, division, terminal, left parenthesis, terminal, right parenthesis, terminal, and then we have blanks. For blanks, we specify a single space and all the ASCII numbers for space, enter, and tap. We also have semicolon and this is defined as token. And then for the ignored tokens part, we want the parser to ignore all blanks. Finally, here is the heart of the parser in Sable CC grammar file, the production section. As part of Sable CC syntax, all must be in lowercase letters. Our production are using extended Becker's novel form where the derivation arrow is replaced with an assignment operator and multiple rules or alternative definition derived from the same non-terminal are divided with vertical bar. So if you are asking, since we are not able to use uppercase letters, how do we differentiate between non-terminals and terminals in the production? So first of all, we have um, specified all terminals as tokens. Therefore, everything that is under tokens will be terminals. Everything else are non-terminals. So this is the grammar on the left side that we are translating in the form of production. So first, we specified all terminals in the form of tokens. And then we specified what tokens we want the parser to ignore. And then we specify the production. So if you look at rule 1, 2, and 3, they are derived from the same non-terminal expression. And the way that this is translated in the form of production is expression plus term, where this rule is named as plus. You can see that name is enclosed in curly braces. Or, since we have alternative definition, expression minus term with the name minus or term with the name term. And then we have a semicolon to terminate the definition. And then for the rule 4, 5, and 6, they are derived from the same non-terminal term. So this is how it is translated into the production part. Term can be derived to term multiply factor with the name multiply or term 
divide factor with the name divide or factor with the name factor and a semicolon to terminate the definition. And finally, rule 7 and 8 are derived from the same non-terminal factor and this is how it is translated into production. Factor can be derived to left parenthesis, expression, right parenthesis with the name parent or number with the name number and a semicolon to terminate the definition. And this is how a grammar can be translated into the form of production in a grammar file of Sable CC.